Yesterday we talked a little bit about the Detroit Lions and, you know, training camp and, and who's going to be there for what. This video is going to be really diving into some of the players that could legitimately be on the roster bubble, whether they make the team or not. I think these players really must have a big-time camp or they're potentially not going to make this football team. And some of these names we have known for some time that's been on this roster for some time. And so a little discuss some of that, and, and maybe they make the roster maybe through special teams or if they blow up camp. But I think these players really need to, to think about the future of their football team and how they're going to perform here in training camp and in preseason to make – this final 53-man roster. We're going to start with Jamar Jefferson. I've been talking about him for some time on this channel. He's going against Craig Reynolds, Mohamed Ibrahim, Jameer Gibbs, and David Montgomery, Jason Cabinda, who is a fullback. I think of all the players, Jamar Jefferson is the one on the outside looking in because if you look at, you know who's going to be there, David Montgomery, he is the power thunder back. He is going to be there. He's going to be one of the main guys. Jameer Gibbs is the lightning. He's going to be running, and he's going to be playing wide receiver. Those two are absolute locks. So how do you get a backup to one of these guys? Well, Craig Reynolds is the tweener. He's in between that. So I think he's got a roster spot because he can be power, and he can be a little bit of speed. So he can cover both. And if you look at Muhammad, Muhammad Ibrahim, he is the prototypical ball, bowling ball running back. So he fits the David Montgomery role really well. And when you look at Jamar Jefferson, he was on the practice squad last year. What does he really fit on this football team in the running back room? There's not much you can really see from that. So he's he's got a big hill to climb to make the Lions' 53-man roster. He'll have to beat out a Craig Reynolds. I think that's who he'd have to beat out. My opinion, when you get an undrafted guy who is talented in one area, such as just running two, three yards, that's invaluable. We've seen it last year with like a Jamal Williams that gets those third and ones, and that's Muhammad Ibrahim. So it's going to be tough for Jamar Jefferson. It truly is going to be difficult for him to make the 53-man roster. Will Harris is the next player on my list. He is a universal player, can play safety as well as corner, but if you looked at what they did here in the Lions, they completely, completely revamped the whole secondary. Absolutely revamped the whole secondary. So... Makes you wonder, how does he make the team? He's not going to beat out the starters, and the backups are starters. Like, that's how good our secondary is. And we got an undrafted guy who did really well in OTAs in minicamp, and if he comes in, performs like that in training camp, I think it's adios to Will Harris. It's going to be him, or, I don't know. I, th I think he's got a lot of work to do. If Utu, if Utu Malafonwu... It's the same type of situation with him. So maybe those two are battling out to get the final spot with the undrafted. So we'll see. But Will Harris has got a big target on his back for this training camp. And he's really, really got to pay attention to this one. Julian Aquara, I think, is another player could be on the way out. Because if you look at the edge position, we really have it filled significantly. John Kaminsky, Joshua Pascal, Aiden Hutchinson, Romeo Aquara, Charles Harris. They did a phenomenal job, like James Houston last year in the draft, that, that can take more of a role this year. So that leaves out there Julian Aquara. He's got to stay healthy, and he's got to actually perform well in training camp. You got to do it, or you're gone. It's simple as that. He could be a trade bait. We've seen multiple trade rumors. Maybe you send him and a third-round pick to Washington for Chase Young. But a lot of issues going on 
with him and his performance on this field. And there's other players you can you can look at too, like a Tom Kennedy. I don't think he makes the 53-man roster, but he makes the practice squad, and he's always been a part of this team, always making attempts to stay on the football team, and he's done well given the opportunity. He's not the greatest wide receiver in the world, but you know you got good hands at him. That is for sure. I mean, that's just the way it is for how he's been with Detroit for as long as he has been. Some of these players, they just fight and fight and scrap and fight and somehow make it, and he's one of those guys that, whether it be 53 or practice squad, he does make being part of the Detroit Lions. No doubt about it. Now, when I look at some of these other players, I'm not necessarily 53-man roster, but some of these guys like Jalen Reeves-Maven, you know, we signed him because he's really good on special teams. Can he legitimately continue to be a special team threat and do well in coverage? where our special teams is pretty damn good, especially in coverage. We'll see how the new rules affects, you know, happen during preseason and all of that. But it's going to be intriguing to watch that one. Stefan Logan. Oof. Yeah. Stefan Logan. Logan Stenberg. We haven't talked about him in some times. You don't pick up Colby Soresdale thinking that Logan Stenberg is going to make the team. We drafted this guy. We thought he would be a beast for the Detroit Lions offensive line. There's a lot of high hopes for him, the physicality that he brought, but it hasn't worked. I think his time in Detroit is probably over now. I don't think he makes the 53. He's going to have to do super charge work in training camp to jump anybody for the Lions roster. Going to have to do a significant work there, or else he's going to be a goner for sure. And Trinity Benson, wide receiver, traded for him a couple years ago. Who is he going to beat out? I mean, I don't see it. Right now, when you look at the wide receivers, you have Amon Ross St. Brown, Jamison Williams, Marvin Jones Jr., Josh Reynolds, Khalif Raymond, Antoine Green. Doesn't spell good for Trinity Benson. Make this football team. Had issues catching the football. <laughs> As a wide receiver, you can't have those issues. That's your number one job. Catch it from the quarterback. It's going to be a tough one for her, for him. For maybe this is his last time here in Detroit. We talked about Jason Cabinda as well many times. We got so many good tight ends and running backs. Is he going to be able to fill one of those needs? Because you got Sam Laporta, you got Brock Wright, James Mitchell. Those three are making the football team. You have the running backs: Craig Reynolds, David Montgomery. And, of course, Jameer Gibbs. Where does he fit in there? Yeah. The, the, like, the role is pretty much fixed when you look at those players in those positions. Going to be quite difficult for him to jump in this roster. Shane Zilstra, who had a pretty good OTAs in minicamp, who I like, I don't think he, he's going to be, be able to beat out Brock Wright. It's just not going to happen. How does he make the roster? He would have to do it in special teams. So it's a good problem to have for the Lions because that means you're losing good players because your 53 is stacked. Your 53 is stacked, and that's what you want to have. And then there's the combination of when the 53-man roster is set, other teams are going to release players. Do the Lions make a claim or pick up another guy that gets released? Add him to a team, then it pushes somebody out. We've seen that many times. So even though the 53 gets set, it's actually not really set. And that's just the way it is. 
Let me know in the comments section who is a player you feel is going to have a hard time making this roster. I'm really curious to see what you think on this one. With that said, folks, adios.